Sue Obeidi, thanks for doing the pod. Thank my pleasure, Latif. I'm so happy to be here. Let's go back to where we met. So we met at the Comedy Bunker. Yep, about three years ago. Yeah, and how did you um, find out about it? We were consulting on a film, and for the life of me, I could not, I cannot remember the name of the film at this point, but uh, one of the writers invited me and my, my colleague Hasnain at uh-huh. the time, and we had... We really had a great time. Yeah, it was it was, uh, it was a fun thing. It was in the mansion. It was pre-COVID and we're all slammed together yep. in this tiny room. Yep. And uh, it, it was always fun to meet people through it. Like I got Absolutely. to meet you yep. and other random, even like um, one of the guys from the Black Eyed Peas was one time in the front row. That's awesome. And this guy was like, you look like the guy from the Black Eyed Peas. Why are you dressing like him? Yep. And later we're, we're like, oh, that was funny how you made fun of the guy from the Black Eyed Peas. Mm-hmm. And he's like. Wait, that was actually him? Yeah. yeah. And he like chased him down to apologize. I, about a year after I attended the Comedy Bunker, I did yeah. a Writers Guild panel in New York. So remember, the Comedy Bunker is here in LA. Yeah. I go to New York to do a panel with the WGA East, uh-huh. and one of the comedians shows up. Oh, wow. And I'm like, why do I not? I kept, I'm, I'm moderating the panel, and I keep staring at him. And I'm like, I cannot connect where I know him. Yeah. And then after I'm like, I am like, sorry, I kept staring at you, but I feel like I know you. And then he told me I was one of the comedians at that night. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot in comedy. You kind of like brush against people a lot. Yeah. Like um, you, you, pa- you see them in passing right. and then you feel like you know them and you may have seen them on podcasts and then you finally become friends and yep. you're like, I recognize this person. Yep. I'm not sure if we're friends and you don't want to offend yep. them. The whole cycle. Yep, and I think we even tried to get him for one of our events at Empire. Oh, okay. The schedules didn't in the line. And, yeah. But yeah, no, it was a great night. It was a lot of fun. I was a little raunchy, and so I was like with my colleague, and I was like, "Oh God, this is kind of I kept my oh, colleague's yeah. mail," and I'm just right. like so embarrassed. But anyway, because yeah, I told him to come with me. Right. Yeah. Right. It's okay. My parents have shown up too, so it's I, the same thing. We had a thing. great time, though. Had a great time. Um, what's one of the? Th- uh, well, why don't you tell us what MPAC is? Okay. Well, first of all, it's the MPAC, MPAC. Mm-hmm. The Muslim Public Affairs Council. It's a public policy advocacy group that exi- has been in existence for about 32 years. I am its director of, of the Hollywood Bureau. I am, have been with the organization for about 21 years now. I was a corporate girl before that, and mm. I came from corporate America. I was a banker. Um, to unpack because I really wanted to be an advocate, an activist for the Muslim community. Mm. I, I felt like we were given, we were given, we were given a bum rap, if you will, vilified. And here was this wonderful organization that I knew about um, doing really the heavy lifting in public policy, advocacy, you know, public perception. And I entered the organization as the director of operations because of my finance background, HR Mm -hmm. and management. And, you know, MPAC has been doing Hollywood work ever since it started with the media awards. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can get into that later. But that's how we began outreach to the Hollywood community. And, you know, Salam al Mariotti, the president, co-founder of MPAC, mm-hmm. really noticed how much I love the industry. I, I mean, it's just one of my passions, to be honest with you. I wanted to be an actress when I was a kid. And, you know, as an immigrant, coming from an immigrant family, it wasn't something your family wanted you to do. And anyway, just... It was just something that, you know, that entertainment industry was just in my DNA. And honestly, I didn't want to be an actress for too long. It was just one of the things yeah. that I thought I wanted to be really, truthfully, it was really the industry that was what I had a passion for. He noticed it. And so when we kept doing more work in Hollywood and then later established the Hollywood Bureau, I, I became the director of it. That's great. Yeah. Once once entertainment gets a hold of you, it's hard it to let, never let's go. You know, and I'm not a creative and, and admittedly, but like I'll watch a movie or a TV series and I'm like, I could have done that scene a little bit better. I read I would have rewrote yeah. it or it would have been better if they did this or that. Um, and I love the business side of the industry, too how it works the mechanics of it all yeah, yeah. That, that relates to producing i mean producing is like having an eye or ear yeah. or visual thing to like raise the bar because oh, yeah. you know and then a lot of like you asked me when we you came over like yeah. what did i do in music a lot yeah. of it was production and production was like hey you do it again i yeah. think you could do it better this can, and kind of pushing right the the bar higher yeah, and higher. The envelope too yeah, yeah. and you know i love i mean i've been told i'm i would be a great producer because i'm very methodical mm-hmm. um so that is something like no matter where I am in the world, no matter what I do, I just know I'm I'm always going to be in this industry, whatever hat I wear. Yeah. It yeah. is fun to also like, 
as a producer, like put like packages together, like, oh, I have this person and like, oh, this, this person would be great for that. And you kind of see it all coming like together. Like a puzzle. Yeah, like a puzzle. Like a puzzle. Exactly. Yeah. This personality doesn't fit that personality. Yeah, well, yeah totally. Yeah. Yeah. And then so um, what does. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. What, what, let me tell you what impact does. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So the Muslim Public Affairs Council's Holly Bureau does five things. Yeah. And they all start with C. And we did it that way so I can remember it. Nice. Right? So the first thing we do is consult. Mm -hmm. We consult on TV, film projects so that have to do with Islam or Muslims or have has a Muslim character in it. We consult in two ways. One is by giving reading scripts and giving notes. Mm -hmm. um, that is the less... Um, impactful way because once a script is written, as you know, you, once the network approves it or green lights it, it's, sometimes it's hard to get it changed. We've been lucky and we've had you know our notes taken, but the more effective, impactful way of consulting is by doing roundtables mm -hmm. in a writer's room before one word is written. And when the writers are still kind of creating the story arc, the, the characters, um, that way you come in, you, you answer all of their questions, and then they can then take that in and then start creating. So they're not as married to the dialogue already and all that Correct. stuff. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. You and so, as a, yeah. <laughs> so it's a. Um, how do they approach you to bring you into the production? It's a great a word of mouth, really. I okay. mean, we don't really knock on too many doors. We're not a watchdog, Latif. Mm -hmm. So we don't. We're not. You're not chasing people. We're down. not chasing people yeah. down. To be honest with you, because we want to be partners with them, and we want to help them tell a better story. We're not wanting to you know, redline a script or anything like that or, or censor or anything like that. We want to help them tell a better story so it'd be more authentic. Right. Um, so they find us by word of mouth. One project leads to another project. One client, you know, tells another client and so on. And that's how it's really been working. Yeah. You know, Maybe they find you because they got in trouble one time and they're like, oh, well, sure. next time we have to be more... Them or their friends, right? <laughs> right Maybe yeah. they, their friends, like, I don't want that happening to me. Or yeah. our opinion editorials, which I'll get into, they're, they're also good marketing for us mm -hmm. um, where they'll find us like on the Hollywood Reporter, you know, website or, you know, email and they're like, oh, I don't know about this organization. Let me reach out. Yeah. So consulting is the first thing. The second thing is connecting. And we connect our, you know, our talent, the Muslim talent in the industry to industry decision makers and creatives. And so what that means is a streamer, a network protection company will call us and say, look, we're adapting a book. We bought this, we bought that, and we really want an authentic voice. We're looking for screenwriters who fit this profile. Okay. And so we'll... You know, we through our networking have created a great database. And by the way, you're on it. Oh, um, and so, well, yeah, we'll just connect them to the those asking. And of course, we first ask the creative, hey, look, we got a phone call. Do you mind um, if I connect you or, or what have you? Or I'll, I'll connect them and then tell them later. I, I'll give them their name, the creative. Are you going to be editing this? A little yeah. Bit? Oh, yeah. I'll give the creative or those asking their names. And mm -hmm. then what I'll do is then reach out to, to the talent and say, hey, look, Netflix called. If if they reach out, it came through us, you know. Yeah. And then um, so sometimes like the WGA panel you did, is that In part of connecting? Uh, that is through, uh, which is the third C. Oh, it's third get C. To, it's okay. okay. All yeah, right. I, I jumped ahead one. That's all good. The other thing we do in connecting, Latif, is through our screenwriting labs. Okay. So we partner up with ABC Television, Wise Entertainment, Wayfair, I mean, various production companies. Currently, we're doing a black Muslim TV Yeah, I just writer. got the email. You yeah. did? Yeah. What email? I got an email from you. Just now? Oh, maybe I didn't just get it. I got think, it. Okay. I think when you s told me about your email, I looked up Sue, and got so it. it was the second email. So maybe it came in earlier. So yeah, no. So we're doing it with the Black House. Okay. And you know, as you know, in our community, Black Muslim narratives are you know have to be elevated for obvious reasons, and and so we were really focused on that, and so we connecting includes our screenwriting labs because. We expose our writers to seriously great people in the industry. This particular writing lab that we're doing, we have Fanchon Cox, who was um, a co-author of the Inclusion pa uh, Writer. Mm -hmm. We have DMA, who is vice president of talent over at ABC Television. Um, we have Hanalei Culpepper, who just won an NAACP award. Qasem Basir, who's directed Muslim back in the day, if you remember that. I don't um, know. And of course, our partner is the Black House, Brooks and Diamond, who's a who's a force of nature. 
on his on his own. So connecting them to these decision makers opens up doors. Right. Right. The scripts are exposed. You know, they have exposure to the scripts, and so we have been successful in getting talent hired that way through our screenwriting labs. Um, right. So that's powerful for the community absolutely. to get their first break, so to speak. Absolutely. One in particular I would like to say is, I don't know if you heard of Disney Junior's Mira Royal Detective. No. Um, well, they have, look it up. Uh, they had an Eid um, uh, episode. Mm -hmm. That writer came through Unpack. Oh, wow. So excited. So it makes us happy. And other examples too, whether it's helping to get a distribution deal um, or, you know, an, you know, an acting job. It just, it's nice to see our labs, our programs, you know, result in, in hiring. Yeah. What happens in a lab? Is it like, are you working? Are you talking? Yeah. Is it, is it networking? So it, it's workshopping. Okay. So I'm, so again, I'm not a creative, so we're cre organizing the lab and we're hiring the, um, the, the writers are coming in. Um, the instructors are being asked to um, workshop the script. So they take each script and basically dissect it, tell them how they could have done it better, what they did well, what they could do differently. So they're coming in with something. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Every writer has a script that they had to submit mm -hmm. um, to, um, to the competition, if you will. Okay. And so they're basically dissecting the work. So a lab, in a way, is, is a competition to get into the lab. Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The the lab itself is the workshop. Mm -hmm. The competition is the competition. So we'll put out a competition, and yeah. it'll just like go. It'll go viral. You'll get an email saying, "Hey, if you're, you know, a writer, and and you, let's just say the Black Muslim yeah. lab, uh, please submit." And and then they submit, and then our partners, MPAC and our partners, will decide on who's going to be picked. Mm -hmm. So we usually go with eight writers. That's the number we felt was like a sweet number, like eight. It's manageable. Right. Yeah. And then, um, so they get into the lab, and that allows them to not only improve their script, right. but also get potentially work out of it. Absolutely, because yeah. you know, it's and it's not guaranteed, right? But they get noticed, yeah. right? They get into the system, if you will, right? Right. And we're working with our partners and other partners to see how we can take the winning scripts and producing them, right. because at the end of the day, that's really where the impact is. Yeah, and that's probably uh, good for the impact brand if the impact brand Absolutely. is known for providing a script out of these labs that's high level that gets made. Absolutely. And then you become more of a player and it's all reinforcing. And so can may I speak a little bit about the blacklist? Yeah. Did you hear about that one? The black, like the, that's like the list of scripts that yeah. are next up, like so, the hottest scripts. Yeah. yeah. So we just released the Muslim list. Okay. And so that is getting a Sounds lot of dangerous. It, it, you know what? It's so funny. It, it, when we were like writing the press release, it's like, yeah. who would have thought like the, the Muslim list, you know? Yeah. yeah. Who would have thought like it, it has such a positive connotation now, you know, right. but yeah, we have the Muslim list, 10 scripts that now the industry is vying for. And when, when Deadline announced the winners, we were bombarded with requests to read the scripts, yeah. which is a really good thing. Yeah. I mean, even the blacklist, this doesn't sound, it's like you have to know what it is. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it's sound, the doesn't sound positive. Right, right, right. It's very positive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very, Today very, it is, yeah. yeah. Very, very positive. So we're we're really inspired about that, like nur identifying, nurturing, and elevating talent. That's right. what we're, and then hopefully soon producing because that's really really where the where the rubber hits the road. What like if it, like because the blacklist in Hollywood used to be like people who weren't allowed correct, to work back in the what the the 40s? like communists, yeah, and the McCarthy stuff. era. Yeah. So what if instead yeah. of the no fly list, right, you change your to the fly list? Maybe that's a good one. Yeah. And do a take on you that. You can take that one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. So the blacklist is out yeah. there for for producers to read. You know, to um, um, read and and consider. Yeah, some really great scripts. And of course, the hard part, Latif, is when you're you have like two hundred submissions, over two hundred submissions, and you have to dwindle them down to ten. Right. That's crazy. It, yeah. it was a very it was a very difficult process and the process, sorry, the process was easy, but it was a very difficult choice. Yeah. So, I mean, you're saying you're making a dream and crushing a dream. It's it's sad to when you, when you're part of that, but kind of, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, but it's power. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to go there, but it's sad because you leave a lot of great stuff on the table and yeah. yeah. 
that's kind of life nowadays, like jobs, everything is like you're saying yes and saying no to a million yeah. people. It's very oh, strange it's, it's dynamic. Hard. It's very hard. And I'll be honest with you, someone who grew up in, a, you know, in America, kind of on the outside looking in, now we're on the inside looking in, right? But, you know, this industry traditionally has not been for like a, a, a an industry that, that we all wanted to, like, we, maybe you and I, wanted to be in it. But our parents were like, uh, you know, this industry is probably not for us. You want to go into medicine or business yeah. or law. Something safer. Suffer safe. Yeah, exactly. Times have changed in the last 10 years. Things have changed so much. So that feeling, that power that you just said, it's really surreal. Mm -hmm. Because it's true that I'm part of a decision that's going to make someone really happy and then someone really sad and yeah. that's not great you know the former is great but not the latter yeah it is hard because also i feel like there's a irrespective of like the different groups breaking into hollywood now it seems like everyone wants to be famous irrespective of that yeah in a way that i think you go further back down generations it maybe wasn't the case i don't know it's just the way it feels with instagram and insta fame yeah. and all that stuff yeah or like yeah seems like everyone wants it I, yeah I, I personally don't, but yeah. But I even agree. if you don't, you're going to, you have to manage your you public you profile. Really do, you really do. I so mean, right. you're, you have socials related to impact, right. which benefits that. And right. so, and our donors. Yeah. And that's the thing, the community, the community loves the work, loves it. And if you're not on social, Latif, it's like. You don't exist. Right. Yeah. And so if I didn't have to do the tweeting and the Facebooking and the Insta, I wouldn't. Yeah. But you have to, because the industry is watching, the community is watching, and so you want to be present. Yeah, it's the first thing most people look up for you now. Yeah, and I don't, yeah, and I don't even have the numbers. Like, I don't even have a big following, but somehow the news is getting out. Yeah, and I don't know how that works, but the news is getting out, and the emails work too. The emails yeah. to the industry, because uh, we have a you know relation, you know, good network of of friends in the industry, and so getting positive affirmations after an email goes out like, hey, you know, great job. Yeah, I saw the post on deadline. Continue the great work. You know, that's great. Yeah. And, and, and that keeps you motivated. Well, emails, uh, a version of social media, maybe the first social media in a way, yeah. and it's linear. So yeah. it can't be de-algorithm. Right. If you send me something, I'm totally. going to see it. Correct. Unless it goes to your spam yeah. or you delete it. Right, but <laughs> it's going to get through me most likely Correct. in a way that a post, yep. the algorithm might determine like, oh, Stu doesn't need to see this Correct. post and send it away. Correct. Yeah, so we're trying to, we're hitting on all angles. We're just doing what we can. Yeah. You so uh, you kind of already answered this question sure. in a way, but I'm going to ask it more directly, which sure. is like, do you think contests as a writer or someone are worthwhile to enter? I believe so because you get noticed and so many programs out there via like, the networks, other Muslim organizations, other underrepresented, you know, other nonprofits putting out, you know, programs and competitions. It, it, your name gets out there. When yeah. your name gets out there, really the sky's the limit. We have one person who made the blacklist and made the black house, you know, and, and you know that that's big. That's a big sign. On your resume yeah, or, yeah. or CV or whatever they call it these days. But yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are yeah. you telling, like, if you are um, a Muslim or a part of the, the community that's uh, represented by MPAC, does, uh, do you have to be telling Muslim no. stories? No. So you can just, just by being part of the group, Correct. it yeah. kind of qualifies you in a way? Correct. And you know, to be honest with you, on the nose content is not really something we push for you mm -hmm. know it, the power to is just being you right right and and then creating a story and then just the fact that you happen to be from that community is icing on the cake right and so no it doesn't have to be a muslim story yeah that's something i always like when i would see um because i'm you know i grew up in canada yeah. i'm here and so like if i have stories that i'm work, working on they're not necessarily uh Muslim forward stories. And I always had that pressure. Well, if I'm going to apply to this one thing, I should probably be doing that. But it's nice to hear that that's not the case. Absolutely. And I think the, the, it's a long game as you yeah. can imagine. And, and the, I, the fact that someone has a hit series hit, you know, feature film, blockbuster feature film, 
and then who happens to be from a certain community. That's power in itself. Right. And that and that also elevates the profile of that community. Right. Yeah. Kind of like Riz Ahmed. Absolutely. And also let's take fresh off the boat abc yeah. fresh off the boat you know with the asian community mm-hmm. um yes it was a show about american asians you know about an american asian community but it wasn't always on the nose it was just right. on the, in the background you know very subtle and we all learned a lot do you feel that irrespective of the impacts feelings and your feelings towards it that hollywood in general still really likes on the nose for box ticking yeah we we have a long way to go. I mean, things are getting better. I mm-hmm. really have to say that, but we have a long way to go. And yes, we're trying to avoid the tokenism. We're trying yeah. to avoid the checking off the box. We're trying to avoid, avoid, you know, the background Muslim character and then calling it inclusion. And we're right. trying to go be way beyond that um, into more authentic storytelling and getting beyond the whole, well, we, you know, we did the whole, we, we included a, you know, a, a Muslim, a black, a, a, someone from the black community and LGBTQ yeah. character. We, we want to go beyond that. Yeah. yeah. So that'll probably still always exist in the short term, but in the long term, hopefully it'll be more, yeah. more, more like Rami, where it's yep. just a story that right. happens to be right. that. And exactly. that's one of the ones I saw where I was like, oh, that's like. And Rami's a great example. Master of None is another yeah. example. Oh, I love Master of None. Right. Yeah. Se- renewed for season three. Oh, it is? Yep. Oh, renewed, so yep. when they went to Italy, it was yep. so great. Ren- like, yep. The whole thing. Yeah. Um, and then um, Big Sick. The Big Sick was big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. With Kumail Nanjiani. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and these projects have opened up and cracked open the door for a lot more so we've we've yet to see the the best i mean really seriously we have yet to see um we we, we are going to see some great stuff coming soon so basically. in your opinion are we in the early innings of this change gosh are I mean, we like, like so interesting that you said inning did you did i ever tell you i was a baseball fan no oh new york yankees oh me too no way that's so bizarre that's so cool <laughs> yeah no you love them um Bottom of the third. Bottom of the okay. Maybe yeah. top of the fourth. All right. Yeah. Again, we're, we're the game's being played. The game is being but played. But anything can happen. And the game, Latif, is yeah. being played in the ballpark. Right. Which is so cool because, I mean, just being in the ballpark. Yeah. Now, yeah. And it's not a moment; it's a movement. Like there's, we're not turning back, and and we're not, and and, you know, the mass jabronis, God bless them. You know, the 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 veterans, if you will, in yeah. the, in, the, in the industry, they've done so much of the heavy lifting and we're all standing on their shoulders right. impact doing work in hollywood 30 years ago was was not a f- popular thing within in, within the muslim community right it was like why are you focused on hollywood they you know they vilify us and, and, the, and the, but maybe that's why it needed to be focused what they said yeah. the founders of the organization said that's is exactly why we have to be in this space yeah because pop culture is the most important important and more most impactful industry there is yeah. when you tell people how to think and how to feel it really impacts how they treat each other how people treat each other yeah and especially coming from hollywood like one of america's number one exports is culture yeah and movies and entertainment yeah. and that right. has shaped the world's culture absolutely so so we are great things are going to happen soon and are happening, to be honest with you. I mean, look, in a year where you had Rami nominated for an Emmy, mm-hmm. you also had, um, and please forget, there were three, Mahershala Ali. Yeah. And I can't remember, there was a third in one year. Three Muslims nominated for an Emmy. Yeah, and Mahershala won an Oscar, I believe. He, an, he was nominated twice, right? Didn't he win twice? or oh, yeah. he, was, he won for Moonlight. Okay, yeah. That, did he win? Yeah. Did he win for a green, a green Book too? I don't That's know. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I want to say he won twice. I don't know. Yeah. but I saw him at least once. But For sure once. And he was so great in Golden Rami. Globe. Also Golden Globe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But but my point, my point is that, it, that you know, it's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the, um, the WGA has become a big partner for you guys? Yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah. You know, we have an annual event. And that is part of the third C, if I okay. may. So yeah, we please. did what? Consulting and connecting. Yeah. Okay. The third one is contributing. What are we contributing? We're contributing our thought leadership. Okay. And that is in the form of organizing panels. The WGA, PGA, we're invited to speak, you know, in at industry events, the Hollywood Reporter variety. Um 
in addition to the guest blogs in the trades. In the trades, we write our articles and just kind of tell the world what, how we think things are happening, going, if you will. And that can be found on our website, all the, all the um, op-eds. Yeah. Those two things, the panels and the op-eds, are ways to get your thought leadership out. Oh, that's yeah, great. So yeah. those are the three C's of empire. Those are only three, but there's five. Oh, there's five? Oh, yeah, oh that's good. Yeah. That's good. Am I boring you? No, no I, want, I want to know them all. So the fourth okay. is create. create so when, yeah. whenever we have extra money, um, you know, funding, we'll try to partner up to create short form content. Okay. And so whether it's a video or short film, you know, so just to kind of inspire the community in, in creating um, content. Um, and the fifth is celebrate. And that's our media awards. And ironically enough, even though it's our fifth, it's actually the first how we first got into the industry. Um, do you recall Casey Kasem? Because you're yeah, yeah, the Lebanese. So, yeah. so Casey Kasem um, was a friend of of the founders of Empath. Okay. And basically told them you are in the you are in the backyard of Hollywood. Why don't you start a gala, an awards gala? And so we started this awards gala, and our first honoree was Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Okay. You remember that? Yeah, with Kevin Costner. Kevin Co and, and Morgan Brian Freeman. Brian Adams on the soundtrack. Morgan yeah. Freeman, yeah. And so we would award um, projects and people that embodied voices of courage and conscience. And it didn't have to be an Islamic movie or a Muslim character. It had to promote universal values. Um, of course, it was icing on the cake when it was a Muslim, you know, a project that included a Muslim. But we also honored Michael Moore. We also honored Alec Baldwin. We also uh, um, honored uh, Lawrence Bender for an inconvenient truth. So it didn't always have to be, you know, something Muslimish. You know, yeah, yeah. this year we did our uh, media awards um, virtual. Um, and we had seven honorees, and again, we left a lot of honorees you know, on the table because of just the program. But yeah, yeah. that's a, that was a dream come true to kind of look back and say, wow, you know, we had seven honorees, you know. Do you ever have the sixth C, condemn, where you speak out against someone doing wrong? So that's a really um, um, good question. I think the condemn will come in the, um, would be in the consult. Hmm. Yeah, in the consult. So... Once, so like I said earlier, we're not a watchdog. Right, right, right. Um, so we'd rather be in the room than on the streets. Yeah. Uh, we feel that we're more impactful that way. But when you are in the room and you build that trust, Latif, um, you can pretty much say anything you want. Yeah. You know, because there's that trust, there's that relationship. So no on the condemn, um, but but it fits in the C in the in the consult. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So That's you, a great question, though. I was just wondering, like, you're, because you see some organizations, they'll put out a press release speaking out against. Yeah, we'll do that privately. Privately, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we do that, but, but, but privately. So you guys are very. That's like diplomacy. They're doing it behind the scenes we, where instead of having public facing arguments. It just works better for yeah. the Muslim Public Affairs Council. And, right. and, you know, we do have an office in D.C. And so we, we're not fresh off the, you know, we're not, yeah, yeah. you know, we're not new. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. And that, that, that's a good long-term strategy because exactly. positivity right. wins. It's not so much positivity that we're after. It's not yeah. that. It's authenticity, right? It's go. authenticity and, and nuance and being fair, yeah. you know? And so it, it's, it's, it's building relationships so you can say whatever you want. And then when you do have those relationships, they, you, it will be received yeah. better. Sometimes are you, do you give recommendations? All the time. And they're like, um, thank you, but no. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's then, why, Latif, we have to get into producing. Right. We have to produce our own content because when when we do, then we're in the driver's seat. Right. Otherwise, when you're consulting, you need to know that, you know, yeah, you can give the feedback, but at the end of the day, it's up to them whether or not they want to take it. Right. You're not in the power. You're not in decision making, Correct. so to speak. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of another organization most? Yeah, Muslims, Muslims on screen and television. Yeah. Yeah, with Catherine Schneider. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Of course, they, they've been doing great work for years. Yeah. Yeah. Is there's, there overlap? Th there's overlap. Um, the more the merrier. Yeah. You know, um, Muslim Arc is doing work. Okay. You know, Pillars Fund is doing work, great work uh, too. Um it's America. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's, you know, competition's healthy. You, you guys like walk in. Oh, most is already here. Yeah, it's really. never. It's so weird. It's never really happened. <laughs> and you know what? 
I'm just being silly. No, of course, no, no. You it's all okay. No, I'm just like yeah. think. No, no, no. It's a great yeah, yeah. question. I mean, you yeah, because it, it's not like you're not competing for business, so to speak. You're competing to do good. You're, yeah, you're to better the world. So the right. more, the merrier. Yeah, yeah. 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 And M is it a nonprofit? Empath. Impact's a nonprofit. Yeah. Yeah. Five hundred one C three. Right. Yeah. So you uh, are there ever drives to like raise money? Oh, don't get me started on that. Not drives, but I mean dinners and you yeah. know fundraising campaigns and things like that. Right. Yeah. And so um, part of the budget, so to speak, is from fundraising, and part of it is from. Uh, I guess getting work. So the, you mean from consulting? Consulting. Yeah. Uh, trust me, we're not keeping any lights on for consulting work because all that we take, we'll we'll get paid for our consulting work, but it's not like we're paying salaries out of just the consulting budget. Okay. No. Um, our our funding mostly comes from private donations in America. We don't take um, foreign money. We don't take donations from foreigners. So it's really from American citizens. Okay, so Americans want to support this. Correct. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's where the bulk of the money comes from. Is there a, and I know you've probably received like a million emails asking for for money, for money from from MPAC, probably no. I mean, now I'm going to. <laughs> no, I thought I thought you were since you're on our list, database. You I know. haven't. I think it's new that I've been on the email list. Got it. So. Or maybe you're not on the don't ask list. Oh, I'm on the don't ask yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, probably. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Is there a reason why you wouldn't take foreign investment? Yeah, we don't want to be on anyone's agenda. Okay. That's really that simple. So. so if you take money from America, eh, that makes sense. If you take money for foreign, it's they might different. ask for something. Correct. No, I mean, even, even, even right, the optics. Like, come on, even yeah. our donors will come and say, hey, I have a great project and I have $100,000, you know, let's do this, whatever this project is. It could yeah. be, let's do a voter drive or whatever, you know. So even in America, when you, you know, sometimes there are strings in, in, in donor with contributions. Yeah. But that's it, normal for any nonprofit. It's normal in this town, too. It's very like sure. one for me, one for you, reciprocal. Yeah. It happens yeah. with me a lot with uh, shows and people asking for things and yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 But that's the system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you feel that Hollywood's going to be moving to some, even though you this isn't your business, but there's going to be some sort of diversity certification program? So that, like, because a lot of it's like people want to be, uh, make sure they're not getting in trouble. Yeah. So they, and I feel like this town's going to move towards that. Like, hey, well, I'm sorry you don't like it, but we had this people certify it, yeah. so it's not and our that, fault. Well, that's the thing with you mean with consulting. Because no, I just mean in general. Do you think someone's going to start doing that in this town if they haven't already? I don't I'm know. Sure, I'm sure they have, and you know, I, we always say like, even though we're consultants, we're we're going to give notes. We're not going to give cover. Yeah. So yes. so. We yeah. always say that. We're going yeah. to give you notes. We're not going to give you cover. So if you're going to say, well, we consulted with the Muslim Public Affairs, like we're not endorsing your work. We're right, just giving right, right. you feedback, you know. Yeah. yeah. But someone's probably going to start doing that sure. because in all these different areas of diversity. Yeah, but we know, like, for example, in consulting work, I don't think we'd ever be part of that. Like, I don't, because you, you just don't know how something's going to end up, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's the problem. Like, f for example, we've consulted on, um, you know, a TV series where, uh, we were read the read the script, gave the notes, and then when we got the rough draft, um, we noticed like the call to prayer as they were transitioning from one scene to another. There was like a beheading, and so we're like, wait, that wasn't in the script because right. the the mute the soundtrack is not in the script. Yeah, and so you know, I don't think we as we as consultants would ever sign on to some kind of clause that says, yeah, we're gonna. This is endorsement. Yeah. Have they, has anyone ever tried to be like, well, we did it with them? No, we always are always very clear. Yeah. And sometimes we'll consult on things, Latif, where we'll say, don't even mention that we consulted. Okay. Because we don't want, we don't, we don't, like, we're, we're not going to give you an okay right. on this. Like yeah. the directed by Alan Smithy? Whatever, you yeah. know, but do you know what I mean? Like, we'll yeah, just yeah. say, you know what, that's not, you didn't take the notes. Don't, right. do the, don't even get a, don't even give us credit. Yeah. Like a writer saying, take my name off this. Whatever. Yeah. 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 So if I'm a so it's not it's not so like um, cut and dry, right? Yeah, yeah. Like anything in this uh, this area, yeah. of developing, it's an art. So you're you're doing you're dealing with emotional emotions, right. a long standing um, different biases right. and stuff, and it's like you're navigating a, probably the toughest space to navigate. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like it's very very charged. Yeah. Do you know who are I, who are our audiences? No. Middle America. You know, John and Jane Doe, Jane Doe, who are indifferent, you know, 
you know, we're, we try not to preach to the choir. We're trying to get to the hearts and minds of, you know, those who are just kind of not knowing how they feel. Um, so if I'm a young writer in Hollywood, yeah. uh, Muslim, mm -hmm. I can be part of the organization or do I just see what, like, like pretend someone's listening and they're new. They just found out about MPAC yeah. from listening to this podcast. Yeah. They're a writer or a comedian and they want to do something. And now they hear they have someone who's looking out for their interests yeah. and they have a script. What should they do? Well, pre pandemic or, po or right, right now they're, they're listening now and they really? have a script and they're like, Start this sounds, I'm Muslim. This sounds great. What do I do? Get on, get on, get on our listserv, see the program, see the competition, start entering as many competitions as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, go to as many panels as possible. Connect with us one-on-ones. I love doing interviews. I love doing generals. I, I call them informational interviews. I okay. think the industry calls them generals, but I call them informational interviews. Right. And then we go from there. You know, if they're ready to be connected, if the script is strong enough to be to be, you know, if I can connect them, I will, um, you know, I, but it, it is a relationship building process there mm -hmm. has. So someone, can I just call and say, I want to be connected. Can you help me? Right. We have to like, you know, make sure that we know who they are, that we're, cause it's our image, right? Our yeah, reputation. Yeah. To be vetted. Correct. I mean, not, I mean, I, God, I don't want to make it sound like we go, they go, we have a vetting process, but it's a relationship building. Yeah. Once we get to know the work, once we get to know the writer, we'll then make direct um, introductions. The best way is to go through the programs. That's how we get to know people. Right. Yeah. That is one thing about this town that's weird because traditionally we're raised in school to be like, oh, we get a job and you apply and like there's a slot and you either get it or not. And a lot of things happen in this town like, oh, this person's here. They can do it. Yeah. And it can be discouraging when you're trying to break in. Right. But I, I do feel that once you're in... You look around and like, oh, there's only 10 people here. Right. When, right. Once you get on the other side, you're like, there's not that many people. I know. It's just like this image of like, once you get through that first wall. I know. And this industry is so hard to break into. Like, I've always heard like, if there's anything else you want to do, anything in the world that you have an interest in that is not entertainment, that is not the industry, do it. Because it is really such a tough industry. Yeah. And... It is about who you know. I mean, you could be the most talented pe person in the world, but it's really about, unfortunately, a lot of times it's about who you know. And so take for, pretend you're a showrunner. Yeah. You have a TV series that you just sold to Netflix and you know cancellations are like this now, right? Yeah. And so you're going to take a chance on who? Like you're going to take a chance on someone you know in your circle that is trusted. And so we're trying to create... The circle that, of the, trust. Right. And as consultants, right. ask when we do consult, we, we take the opportunity to look around the room and say, hey, you're writing a story that has Muslim themes, but you don't have any Muslims around the table. So these are opportunities for us to start plug, you know, plugging in our plugging in our, our talent. Right. Making sure they're included. Yeah. And hired. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and hired. I mean, one of the things we always said when we... Um, started consulting is that we wanted to we wanted to work our way out of a job now granted that's a long way from from now but that's the end goal we want to get as many screenwriters in the pipeline so we don't need consultants again a long way to, from now but that's the goal yeah and is it primarily writing focused impact really focuses on writing i mean yeah. producing and directing but mostly on writing and not too much on acting right right and um so I think that's a good thing to outlay because there's always this like, um, there, it, it's hard to wrap your mind around the perception of like what it actually means to make it because of these, we're taught from a young age, such a linear path. Mm -hmm. And then lo the non-linearity of Hollywood to me is the hardest part. Like if you're talented and you wait it out and, you, and you're comfortable with it, not necessarily being linear, it's a great place for you, I think. Mm -hmm. And it can be challenging, but there are opportunities and there's not that many people doing great stuff. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, that's mm -hmm. what I've noticed. Like there's a lot of people doing it, but if you're good, there's room for you. Yeah. Great stories will be told. Yes, at the end exactly. Of the day. That's really at the end of the day. But but still you need to navigate strategically. Yeah. Because yeah. even with music, like... If you have a hit song, it's going to find a home. It's yeah. going to find a place. I agree. Now, if you sit at home and don't show it Correct. to anybody Correct. and you're too scared to like bring it out. Yeah. I'm sure there's hit songs sitting on people's laptops all around the world that have never seen the light of day. Yeah. But usually if you have something and someone hears it, like 
And the people who have an eye for great stuff, like I'm sure you do, are like, wait, we can do something yeah. with this. And they get excited yeah. about it. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But it's a long game. It is a long game. A long, yeah. yeah. And you're right. You can't be in 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 the room just creating great stuff. Right. You have to be out there pounding the pavement. Yeah. Meeting people. Meeting people who are going to crack doors open for you and introduce you to people. Yeah. Because it it's either a long game or an extremely short game. Yeah. Some people walk in and the doors fly open yeah, and you're like right one, away. Yeah. And so that's, if you're, if that's your number one thing you want to do, that's very hard to replicate. Yeah. And that's just the universe right. and serendipity, yeah. but a long game can, can be planned for it somewhat linearly yeah. if you're yeah. patient. Yeah. It's so funny because back in the early Hollywood days, when, when actors and actresses were discovered, like eating an ice cream cone at some yeah, yeah. cow, you know, exactly. yeah. or they come off the, <laughs> the bus and yeah. the station from, from Iowa or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it still happens. And look, I have some friends Anything who are can happen. a couple years in comedy and already have their own show. And you're yeah. like, okay, well, yeah, like yeah. it it can happen. This is America. Yeah. Anything can happen. We're not we're a post pandemic. We were that generation that got the pandemic. Anything yeah. can happen. Do you feel that Hollywood's coming back in terms of what it's filming in town and the business? I, I think so. From yeah. what I'm from what I'm reading in the trades, it is, yeah. Yeah. And it's so like the corona thing is kind of winding down and we're going to be all right. I mean, you have to talk to public health people. Like my sister who's in public health is t telling me like, still be careful. And, yeah. you know, you know, we really won't know if these vaccines are really super effective until we are doing this. Right. You know, it's kind of testing the vaccine on us. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we're the guinea pigs. Correct. In a way. Correct. But, but yeah, the short answer is yes. Yeah, like uh, productions are coming back yes, online. People yes, are doing things, and and then doing it in person. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. So, like when you and I arranged this, I was a, I thought a Zoom, right, or something like that. It was a Zoom, and then and I got like vaccinated. Yeah, and I, think I you did got, too. And then I we're like, too, all right, yeah. well, let's yeah. uh, let's do it in yeah. person yeah. because. Yeah, and and post Ramadan, so it's nice too. Yes, yeah, so you're not yeah. hungry during the whole thing. Yeah, or thirsty, or you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you were a. Uh, um, MPAC, to sum it up, is basically if you're a writer, a Muslim writer, and you want to do stuff for TV and film, and I'm assuming some internet-based projects. We don't do much internet. So TV and uh, film. Sorry, did you say internet? Yes, yeah. sorry. Let's like web say, series? Ask me the question. I, I, I process international. Okay. Films, so yeah. so um, if you're MPAC. You want to come to MP You're a Muslim writer with a story to tell. Uh, you should take your script, enter, check out the the labs, enter it in, get some feedback. Get to know MPAC. Get to know MPAC. Come and to our the, events. Come to the events. Yep. Uh, I listened to one uh, recently and it was so good. I, I wish I'm, I caught like the end of it, but I was just listening to different writers in the community. I think Lorraine Ali was oh, on. Oh, yeah. And it was Which great. one was it? We have, she's a friend. We have her moderator panel a lot. It Which was one? about a month ago. Was or, it the Writers Guild yeah. Middle Eastern panel? Yeah, oh, yeah, that was a good one. That was yeah. great. And that was at Sundance. Right. Yeah, we we partnered with Sundance. And it's, so they should take part in those events, yeah. and then that'll give them the first correct step to yeah. kind of like figuring out yeah. like what, like it's like a resource that's available, Absolutely. and especially like you said for other for Black Muslims yeah. as well, and yeah. all these different things. And you mentioned most and most, yeah. You get to know all the organizations doing the work. You know, it's not you know it's. It's not a monopoly. Yeah. And the more the merrier because we are competing for good. Yeah. And that's always a good place to be. Now, what if someone wants to come and work for MPAC? Well, I mean, you know, we are, you know, an American Muslim organization that relies on donations. And so yeah. sometimes, you know, budgetary constraints don't allow us to be hiring. So currently we don't have any positions open. Yeah. But if you have a big fat check pocket, that's the <laughs> write a check to MPAC. And you want your kid hired, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, so that's how it works. It's a pay to play. You write, you <laughs> donate and get your kid hired. You but, heard, you know, but you know what you I heard mean? You heard it here it's first. Like, no, but you know what I mean? It's like really honestly, like yeah. we are an American Muslim organization, one of hundreds yeah and so we do rely on donations right my point being is is that a lot of times when when nonprofits get huge donations sometimes that comes with strength so that was a joke yeah. no you do not write impact okay do joke. not that was a joke this is yeah. a comedy podcast yeah. do not expect your child <laughs> to be hired wink wink to be hired <laughs> right that is a separate conversation right. and right. much more expensive it'll go first of all to keeping the lights on you know right yeah, yeah. Keep the lights on. Yep. Make sure they can keep doing great yeah, work. Yeah. There's a great group that started on Clubhouse. You know Clubhouse? I do. I have it. 
and I don't, and I have followers. I didn't press one button. I don't know how that happened, but I've never been on Clubhouse. Yeah, you're popular. But on nope. Thursdays at 5 p.m., there's a Brown Comedians group. Okay. And it's like Ask Brown Comedians Anything. Oh, interesting. And it's an interesting group. It's like, uh, who's some, in it? Um, like Fizza Dasani, um, basically, um, uh, Aristotle. It's basically all the, uh, any Brown comedian can join the group. And okay. people on Clubhouse just ask ram random questions. And some yeah. of them can be like, kind of crazy and yeah. some of them are fun and it's cool. just like and that's kind of connected uh, all the brown community together in LA like I've met a bunch of different brown and Muslim comedians in the scene that I didn't yeah. even know right so that's like another I need to I need to like focus on clubhouse yeah yeah, yeah. you should come in and talk about it when I'm ready to okay. get into clubhouse God, no I, I can't I can't keep up with the, all the social media stuff yeah yeah apps and yeah, like, yeah remember when so, like I'm hearing Facebook is like for older people now, and I'm just like, gosh, yeah, is that true? Yeah, I mean, it's is there. That true? Is that true? I don't, it's part of Instagram, so it's all for old people. The young it's people so, are, and, and what and what constitutes old at this point? Like, you know, I don't know, I don't know either. So it's we don't want to go there. We don't want to go no, there. No, we don't. Yeah. Well, tell us how to find you. Give us social media. Best place to contact MPAC. Best well, place to reach out for you and make sure well, you're helping. Yeah, I mean. D- my direct email is Sue, like it can't be complicated, S-U-E at yeah. impact.org. Easy. And then our website is impacthollywoodbureau.org. And where should they follow? Oh, I mean, at Sue Obeidy. Okay. You know, yeah, at impact na- underscore national. You know. Follow at impact, follow at Sue, Sue a- yeah, Obeidy. Obeidy. I'm going to fo- do the same. I, I already thought, follow you, but I, thought, I, don't yeah. th- I don't know if I follow impact. Okay. And I'm going to join the next one and send and you that, some stuff. I'm yeah. excited to talk to you more about it. June 8th, we're having a panel around the show, um, United States of Al. Okay, yeah. CBS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My friend Fahim Anwar writes okay, on Okay, very good. Fantastic. Yeah. And so he'll be on it. Yeah. He'll be on it. Um, and Lorraine is moderating. Okay, so great. So more information on that soon, but I'll send you a direct like link or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fahim's already on it? Yeah, Fahim and three other writers. Oh, that's going to be yeah. good. He's- yeah. Super funny guy, yeah. one of the funniest we're, we're guys in town. We're trying to shoot for June eighth. We're trying to do. We're trying to get all four of them together, and we're looking at June eighth. So Reza Aslan is is working on him. But yeah, perfect. That's June eighth. We'll watch that. I'll yep. be watching. Yeah, and uh, can't wait to see you again soon. My pleasure. And listen, thank you, thank you so much for reaching out. You know, nothing is haphazard. Yeah, nothing is a coincidence. And. This was meant to be. So I really appreciate it. And let's figure out how we can work together. Let's do it. And thank you for doing the informational interview with my friend. Oh, yeah. Coming up soon. Yeah. All right. Take oh, care. You should see you later. Bye. Bye.